Hey everybody, welcome back to Welcome to Mintland, the podcast. This is Chapter 10. Welcome to Mintland. The greatest place on earth has bleeding green turf. It's always a magical day when you're a mint Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric Moran, and we are going to get into Chapter 10. And if you've followed this story um, so far, this is the chapter uh, that answers many of the questions you may have at this point. Um, it's a pretty exciting chapter. Uh, it, it is basically what defines this season for Peppermint. Um, it, it was a huge shock for everybody. Um, what's cool about this podcast is I'm going to get a few, uh, few interviews in here, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, it'll be nice to hear a few other perspectives other than my own on the season and, uh, get some real life, uh, you know, reactions to, to what happened in this chapter. Uh, as you may well know, uh, after NCA, uh, we just read that chapter. Um, you know, this chapter describes the feeling um, from a parent's perspective, from a teammate's perspective, and quite frankly, the entire gym's perspective um, on what happens when you lose a huge competition and you did everything that you thought you needed to do to win, but it didn't happen. Um, you know, what do you do? Uh, how do you react? Uh, what's the next steps? Do you pack it up and go home? Do you keep going and fighting? Or do you shoot for the moon? And uh, this chapter describes uh, the choice that this team made. Uh, more importantly, the choice that this coach made. And, you know, one one of the, the sayings that uh, that has come from writing this book that has been very prevalent in my life is what would happen if someone continuously told you that you could be the best in the world and you dared to believe it? And that saying is very fitting for what happens next in this chapter. And we'll get some Pretty cool perspectives from a few guest interviews in here. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, without further ado, I will uh, get into a few of the interviews before I read. So enjoy. The first guest interview we have is Blair Green. Uh, Blair is a parent of uh, one of the Peppermints of that uh, now famous season. Uh, her daughter is Leah. And uh, at the time, she was six. And we will get into... Uh, her her perspective of uh, how that season went and how this moment in the book happened for her. So without further ado, uh, we will get into uh, the first interview with Blair. And it is a phone interview, so I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It's raw coverage, so enjoy. As promised on the podcast, I, I mentioned that I was going to have a few guests uh, for this chapter, uh, chapter 10. And on the line, I have Blair Green. Thanks for joining us, Blair. Well, thanks for having me, Eric. I'm excited to be here. Yes. yes. And for those who don't know, I'm going to kind of put her on the spot. Uh, Blair is the one, I mentioned a few times, um, that there were a few parents that really pushed me to write this book. And Blair was the one that really put me over the edge. She kept saying, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. So... Uh, you can thank Blair for me going through this whole process. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Blair, what, you know, I, I we just finished Chapter 9, which was NCA. And what I was – I'm hoping to get a few perspectives from um, some of the teammates and, of course, the parents on just kind of what was the vibe coming home from NCA? I mean, it really is one of the granddaddies of them all as far as competitions. What was your perspective on on the vibe once we got back into the gym in those next couple of days? Yeah, you know, we left for NCA. I think everyone was really hyped up, and it was 
just that whole weekend at NCA was a pretty stressful weekend. Um, and we had gone in there thinking we had a, we had a pretty good shot of, of winning and, and, and not just the peppermints. I think stingrays on, on the whole kind of felt that way. And it was, it was pretty, it was pretty down. I think a lot of people just felt like they worked really hard and, you know, they, they felt very let down. They felt like we had done better and maybe the results of the competition weren't very reflective of, of the effort our kids put in or the performance that they put on stage. I know, I know for us, we really felt like our kids really felt like they wanted to win and they felt like they deserved to win. And we all felt pretty, pretty down that that, that didn't happen. Sure. And of course your daughter is with Leah. And as a parent, I, I, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there is nothing more difficult than explaining to your child after they hit both days that they didn't win. Right. Tell me a little bit about how you as a parent handled that situation with her. Yeah. Um, so my daughter at the time was six. So she was one of the younger ones on the team. And I was, that was probably a very fortunate thing for us. Um, but, you know, she, she uh, up to that point in her stingray career hadn't had a whole lot of a disappointment and you know I think the hardest thing for her at least for me with her was explaining that you know just because you do your best doesn't always necessarily mean you're going to win and you know that's that's a really tough lesson to teach a six-year-old um, but sure. she yeah I mean I think she handled it really well it was really the first time that I've ever really had to explain to her you know you guys went out there and, and did everything you needed to do but the, you know the judges the judges felt like another team was a better team that that day, and sure. um, I kind of I kind of put it in that perspective you know, perspective for her. I think there was a lot of well, we got cheated, and the judges didn't cheat us right, and you know the other team cheated, and so there was there was a lot of no, they didn't cheat, and having and really having to explain it to her. But you know, and even as a parent, when you're that up, it's hard as a parent to have to kind of give your kid those lessons, even when you're upset yourself about it. Sure, and the fact of the matter was, Callie was amazing. Um, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, the, all of the teams there were, were incredible. So, well, very good. I, you know, I appreciate your, your perspective on. So that concludes part one of the interview with Blair. Uh, you will hear from her a little bit later on in the podcast, uh, to get a different perspective, um, after we read the chapter. So we look forward to hearing that. The next guest interview we have is, well, a pretty special person in my heart. Uh, it's actually my daughter, Caitlin. And um, as I was asking a few people to get a few interviews uh, in for this podcast, uh, Caitlin is a little shy. So it took her a while to ask if she could be a part of the podcast. And I'm very glad she did. Um, I, w- I didn't want to pressure her into talking about it uh, on a forum such as this, but she certainly volunteered, and I absolutely loved getting her perspective on this. So this is my daughter, Caitlin, and in the next interview, and uh, take a listen, and I hope you enjoy. Well, I'm joined by a very special guest right now. I'm joined by one of the bases um, on the 2015 Stingray All-Stars Peppermint uh, from the book Welcome to Mintland. I'd like everybody to welcome Miss Caitlin. How are you, Caitlin? I'm doing good. Good. Well, so my goal in this chapter was to kind of get some feedback from some of the teammates. Um, I'm hoping to talk with a few of the parents other than myself, of course. But so as if you've been listening to the podcast you you know that I just uh read chapter 9 which was NCA and uh going into NCA you guys were you guys were riding a wave of success and talk to me a little bit about uh you know how you guys felt at NCA I mean it it was some really really incredible competition uh describe kind of how you were feeling well, we, we really didn't know what was happening. Um, we all just thought it was just like this normal competition. And then we saw the teams performing, and we were like, oh, my gosh. Um, they were really good, yeah, huh? They yeah, they were really, really good. And we were starting to kind of worry. Sure. And then, you know, after you hit on day two, do you remember that feeling coming off the mat? 
Yeah, we felt all really good. Um, and then we were all with our parents, and then the announcer, um, it they announced the um, the first place team because we were in second at the time, mm-hmm. um, and it was Cali. So we were all kind of excited to watch Cali, and we started watching Cali. And we were like, geez, this team is really, really good. Are we going to be able to beat them today? Mm -hmm. Like, was our team and our performance good enough to beat them? Yeah. So describe the feeling. Um, It's happened a couple times in your cheer career. But talk to me what it's like about hitting on both days but coming up just short. Oh, okay. So... When you hit, you're all like, yay, that probably means that we win, yay, we won, and we were all used to winning because we hadn't lost yet, Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're on, and then once you realize that you didn't win, you're kind of, but but we did so good, what went wrong, like what did we do that we shouldn't have done? Right, right. Well, th- those are tough life lessons, right? I mean, that's uh, that's what makes All Star Cheer special. Um, there's a bunch of very good highs, but sometimes when you do great, it's just not good enough. There's a lot of great teams out there, so it was a good life lesson to learn. That concludes part one of my interview with Caitlin. We will hear from her a little bit later in the podcast as well. And without further ado, I'm going to get into uh, the reading of chapter ten. It is a very exciting chapter, and I certainly hope you enjoy. Talk to you soon. Chapter 10. The Peppermint Plot Twist The day after returning from Dallas, my daughters and I head to the gym for their tumble classes as usual. As we walked in, I could tell the gym did not have the normal energy. The competition took a lot out of everybody. It was a very stressful trip all the way around, for all the teams. As I begin to look around, I see the usual suspects in the gym on the following day. Many of the peppermints greeted each other and started tumbling and playing together. Many other athletes from other teams begin to file in as well. Parents were milling about, and a few were chatting amongst themselves. I noticed Coach Ashley walking briskly towards one of the parents from another team. She seemed overly energized, talking with the parent. She saw me standing watching tumble class and came over to to speak with me. She asked how the girls' spirits were. I said they were both disappointed with the results, but were in good spirits overall. I then asked, how close was it? Coach Ashley responded, it was close. That was it. In true Stingray's fashion, that would be all I would get out of her. That was all I expected. I stated it would have been cool to win the triple crowned outright, but we still had a great shot at winning the points race. I said, we will be able to build up that momentum and get the kids extra excited about competing at at UCA. After I said that, Coach Ashley's face lit up. She seemed like she had something to tell me, but was debating on whether or not she should. She responded, Okay, well about that. Can you let the parents know we are going to have a mandatory meeting on Thursday night? I'm going to need at least one parent represented for each athlete. I was a bit taken aback. I responded, Okay, what is the meeting about? Does this have anything to do with the Triple Crown? She responded, Well, kind of. This should make up for this past weekend's results, and that's all I can say at this point. I looked at her and said, There is no way you can leave me hanging like that for four days. She looked at me and began to laugh as she was clearly bursting at the seams. She said, Okay, can you keep a secret until Thursday? I said, Well, sure. Coach Ashley began to share her vision. Okay, so you know the next competition is UCA. So what we are going to do is move Peppermint up to up an age group level and have them compete as a youth large team. I want to try to earn an at-large bid to enable them to compete at Summit. I think this team has the talent level to compete at the youth level and do extremely well. I know it's a long shot. 
but I know this team can do it. My head and heart began racing. I did not know what to say. I had so many thoughts and questions in my mind, but at this point, I was so excited for this team. I honestly just wanted to burst into tears. The past weekend was a tough pill to swallow for the team. But just the excitement of them getting this opportunity to try would be a memory that these kids would remember for a lifetime. Coach Ashley then shared a few more details about how this master plan would work. She did not waver one second. She knew this team had a shot at executing and potentially winning an at-large bid. She just kept saying, I know in my heart this team can do this. They have done it all year. And this is what we are going to do. She asked me not to share any of this yet to others, as she did not have all the details buttoned up yet and would need until Thursday to share all the information with with everyone. I agreed, but in my heart, I had no idea how I was going to keep this incredible information a secret for over three days. After tumble practice, we put the kids to bed and I began drafting out the email to the Peppermint parents about the mandatory meeting. I knew the second I sent this email, it was going to draw a bunch of questions from the parents. Speculation began almost immediately after the email was sent. Many guesses were made, but no one was even close to guessing what Coach Ashley was going to share with them. As some of the -the behind-the-scenes pieces fell into place, it was quickly Thursday, and it was almost time for practice. Coach Ashley made sure all the parents were present. She shut the door behind her and set the stage for the news. Ashley thanked all of the parents for the incredible support they had provided up to this point. She shared how proud she was of this team and what they have accomplished so far this year. She also acknowledged that this past weekend was a tough loss for the team. Coach Ashley then paused. She then said, I think there is a way to cheer the team up and get them focused for the next challenge, which is UCA. One of the parents asked about the purpose of the mandatory meeting and why there needed to be one parent for each athlete represented. Coach Ashley took a deep breath and responded, Well, I am glad you asked. The reason I called this meeting is that after consulting with the coaching staff here at Stingrays, I want to make Peppermint a youth large team and have them compete at UCA. As I looked around the room, some of the parents knew what that meant. Most did not. One of the parents asked, So our mini team would be competing against youth teams that are 9, 10, and 11 years old. Coach Ashley responded, Yes, that is correct. We want to do this in an attempt to win an at-large bid to compete at Summit at the ESPN Wide World of Sports in Orlando. I know this was not on anyone's radar, as of course many teams are not eligible to compete at Summit. This would also come with a few stipulations, as we could not take a bid from another Stingray team who has not yet won a summit bid. I also need everyone to understand there could be potentially some additional costs involved if we should earn an at-large bid to summit, and I need to make sure everyone is on board with this decision before we proceed. Coach Ashley explained all of the different scenarios and how they would play out to all of the parents. Another parent then asked, have you informed the team about this? Ashley responded, no, I wanted to let you know first to make sure everyone is okay with this. And then I was going to tell the team at the beginning of practice tonight. Then the question was asked, can we watch you tell them? Coach Ashley smiled and said, absolutely. All of the parents filed out and headed toward the window that overlooked the gym. You could see the team frolicking on the mat as they normally do before practice. Coach Ashley motioned the team to gather around. All of the coaches surrounded the team and began to explain the vision. 
While standing up in the parent viewing area, word quickly started to spread. A few parents from other teams began to wander over to see what was happening. The parents eagerly waited for the reaction of the team. After a few minutes, the news was obviously about ready to be shared with the team. Sure enough, the team erupted in cheers, and they stood up and began jumping around like popcorn. To say they were excited would be an understatement. Many of the parents were in tears at the faith placed in this team and the team's reaction. The second the news was shared, I knew no matter what happened for the rest of the season, this opportunity would stay with Peppermint forever. Being the young, naive children they were, they did not yet realize what a gift they had been blessed with. All they knew is that they were going up against the big kids, and they needed to do their very best to not only win the youth large division, but also score high enough in level one to win an at-large bid to go to Summit. It was a very tall order, but this team had overcome the impossible many times, and they were up for that challenge one more time. There were a few risks in making this decision. Competing as a youth team would mean that they would have to forfeit the possibility of winning the Triple Crown's point race. Although Mint was competing at UCA, they would not be competing as a mini-team, therefore ineligible to win their respective division. They would also be going up against a very strong youth team that had already won a summit bid at cheer sport. It would be a risky move, but with UCA being the final competition, it was worth a shot. Upon making this decision, Peppermint would have to modify the team. In order to compete in the youth large division, Peppermint would need at least 21 athletes to qualify as a large team. Word spread quickly about the news, and we had a gym full of volunteers that wanted to help Peppermint. It was very exciting for everyone. One of the challenges of competing as a youth team was height. Peppermint overall was a pretty young mini team and we needed some height to offset some of the younger Peppermints. Coach Ashley consulted with some of the Stingray youth team coaches, along with the parents of those athletes. With permission from all, the team of 18 would soon be 23. Adding teammates can be a risky move as teams build bonds and learn how to maximize strengths and weaknesses over the course of the year. Selecting the right mix into this team would be critical as the new members would only have three short weeks to learn the routine and be flawless. Coach Ashley introduced the new members of the team, and Peppermint was so excited to have them join. What was most exciting to them was all of the new members of the team were Peppermint alumni. The new members of the team were extremely excited as they had an, an additional opportunity to go to Summit with Peppermint along with their current team. While the team was excited, there was no time to waste. The team began walking through the routine with the routine, new team members and the coaching staff had to begin to reconfigure the routine for the new additions. The trick for the coaches was to limit any major changes to the routine, but also keep the wow factor and intensity for the level one routine. It would certainly be a challenge for the new athletes joining the team. They would now have the pressure of mastering two routines with each of their teams for upcoming UCA competition. As the new team began working on perfecting their chemistry, as a team dad, I wanted to make sure the new parents of the new athletes felt welcomed and appreciated. We knew the two team members had a tough challenge of perfecting a brand new routine in which they only had five practices to learn. It was no secret that the team and the parents had formed a special bond over the course of the season, and I wanted to make sure we extended a warm welcome to everyone, including the parents. The amount of sacrifice any cheer parent makes is significant. To add on the additional responsibility of committing to another team, it was certainly a lot. We were all very appreciative to the new members. The new Peppermints volunteered to come in early and stay late to learn the new routine. Add this on top of practicing with two teams, 
their normal additional tumble classes, and juggling school. It was really incredible to watch. As practices progressed, the entire gym learned about what Peppermint was going to attempt at UCA. Some of the parents did not quite understand how the summit bid process worked, which created some uneasiness with parents on other teams. Some of the parents on other teams did not quite understand why Peppermint was throwing away an opportunity to win the points race for the Triple Crown. Some parents felt there was no way Peppermint, a mini-age team, would earn an at-large summit bid as a youth team. There were many whispers going around the gym, but overwhelmingly the reactions were extremely positive, especially on the Stingray practice mats. Many of the senior teams caught wind of what Peppermint was going to attempt at UCA, and they did nothing but support and encourage the Peppermints in the gym and via Twitter. And it really made them feel special. The talent on every team at Stingrays is incredible at every level. But the older kids knew this team was special. They know what it feels like to be on a younger team and not necessarily get all the attention. They remember falling in love with cheer at a young age. They remember the exuberance and innocence of going out there with their team and just doing their best with the one person to the right and left of you and creating memories. They understand what it feels like to be small in size but giving undeniable trust in their teammates. They remember the innocence of feeling as special as orange, peach, or steel after running off stage after they hit their routine because that is who you looked up to. They understand the bond that is the Stingray All-Stars legacy. They understand that Peppermint will do their job because that's all they know. And that is what they've been coached to know. It seemed at this point Peppermint had convinced each other to perform on stage like nobody was watching. They knew they had the entire Stingrays family behind them, big kids, coaches, and all. If they failed, there would be disappointment, but they knew the Stingray family would always have their back. In return, Peppermint would give the other teams all they could from an encouragement standpoint. Anytime Peppermint got the opportunity to watch the senior teams go full out, the entire team would scream out their music and watch intently as the older teams worked their magic and flew through the air with elegance and grace. Peppermint had memorized almost all of the other teams' music out of respect and admiration for the other teams in the gym. They loved all the teams, but Peach was special. The bond was undeniable, and they would support each other every chance they got. The coaches helped support the effort as well. Many would come over to offer support and make suggestions and offer encouragement. The new Peppermints were picking up the routine quickly. The entire team was bonding, and the confidence in each other was quickly making itself appear on the practice mat. Full out after full out, Peppermint was hitting again and again. Occasionally, there was a few timing issues or a small bobble or a glitch, but for the most part, the team was very close to being ready. The hard work was paying off, and now we would soon see how the team would respond to the new division added pressure, and expectations. The fun part was listening to the kids talk about the opportunity. They would often say things like, I can't wait until we get our opportunity to try and go to Worlds. To them, Summit was their Worlds. Of course, Worlds is reserved for senior teams, but Peppermint watched every move at Worlds on ESPN, and that was what they all knew. The new older editions got caught up in the hype, and how could they not? This team had an incredible confidence about them, and the culture was infectious. It seemed the team had a nothing-to-lose aura about them, which was a great attitude to take into the last major competition of the year. At the end of the day, at any level, cheer has to be fun, and this team made watching them a blast. A few of the Peppermints caught win that they may be over their head with competing against youth teams. 
and that only fueled the fire to work harder. Adding the moniker of underdog made them even more dangerous, and they thrived on the challenge. It was only fitting that the last night of practice, the teams had a full-out party in preparation for UCA. The intensity level at the gym was intense, as there were a few more Stingray teams striving for a summit bid at the final competition of the year. Peppermint waited their turn to take the floor and passionately cheered on the other teams going full out. Peach was next, and you could see the banter between the two teams. Peppermint as a whole was so proud to call them their buddies, and they could not wait for them to hit the floor so they could cheer them on. As usual, Peach lit up the mat and showed the entire gym how to hit their routine. And without a second of hesitation, Peppermint screamed out the final, I got 99 problems, but a peach ain't one, all in unison, to close out the final full out for Peach. The dance started, and Peppermint clapped to the beat of the music. Normally, not too many teams would like to follow Peach, but Peppermint pranced out there and was ready to attempt to equal the intensity level. Sure enough, they began their full out, and in true Peppermint fashion, they hit and hit strong. The teams roared for them, and they smiled together one last time as a new unit. It was time to take what they had learned and see what they could do at UCA. That concludes Chapter 10. I hope you enjoyed. So, wow, what do we got here? We've got a mini team who had one goal of winning the Varsity Triple Crown, which was Cheer Sport, NCA, and UCA. Unfortunately, as you just heard, the team came up short in their vision to win all three competitions. So you just heard a coach raising the bar on a group of six, seven, and eight-year-olds. And what we're going to do next is hear a few perspectives on that that time in between the two competitions, which were NCA and UCA. And um, it, it's a very unique perspective uh, from the athletes and the parents. Uh, you're also going to hear a section um, from a sibling who was on the Grape Rays, the younger uh, sister of Caitlin. And uh, I will introduce her a little bit later. But she has an interesting perspective on on her experience at NCA when you're on a team that hits both days and you just don't win. It, it, it's sometimes it happens. It's a, it's it's something you have to deal with and cheer, and you will always get better from the experience. So, um, without further ado, I will turn it over to the rest of the interviews. Uh, the next piece I wanted to share was part two of uh, of the interview with my daughter Caitlin. And what you're going to hear now is her perspective of coming home to NCA after uh, coming in second place to the Cali All-Stars. Her walking in the gym in her tumbling class. And you're going to hear a part about um, an observation she made. Uh, she she kind of talks about it briefly, but um, she was in a tumble class with Kat Haley at the time. And Kat actually was coaching... Uh, the Red Rays, which was a youth team at the time, and uh, her coach, Coach Ashley, was was actually asking permission at the time if she could use a few of the athletes on Red to help with Peppermint. Unbeknownst to Caitlin at the time, it was happening and going down right in front of her. So this is her perspective on coming back from NCA. And also hearing the incredible news, how she felt, what was going on, what was the team's vibe when they learned they were going to try the impossible. So I hope you enjoy part two of my interview with Caitlin. Okay, we are back with Miss Caitlin, and I just wrapped up chapter 10, which was the peppermint plot twist. And it was such a cool moment for everybody. Um... In in you know being being your dad, um, kind of talked to me about. Do you remember the feeling we had when we walked into the gym after NCA, before we knew what was going on? 
Yeah, um, so I walked in, and I was kind of, like, looking at the coaches, looking at everybody. They were kind of in, like, this daze. And I had a feeling something different was going to happen this practice. Um, because the tumble class before, Coach Ashley asked the coach I was with is if it was okay if we did something, and I didn't hear what she said. So I was like, "What? what's going to happen today? And they were all just, like, shocked, like, just, whoa. Yeah, I, I remember you telling me that, that, that when you came in the gym, everybody was kind of in shock after NCA. Uh, it was a tough NCA for Stingrays on a whole. Um, we got a lot of second place finishes that season, and um, it was just kind of a, a, a maudlin kind of scenario. Everybody was kind of down and in shock um, that they didn't win, and, and that's normal, uh, especially when you've been so successful over the years. So... How did you, how did you find out, or what did it feel like, or specifically what happened um, on the day you found out that Coach Ashley had this vision for you guys and you were going to go for a summit bid? Well, what happened was is she all called us over and she was telling us how it was her fault that and the coach's fault that we didn't win because our team and our um, our routine wasn't um, like difficult enough, um, and then so she huddled us huddled us around and she started saying she was like okay so we've had this plan and we're going to try and go for a summit bid and we were all we all knew what summit was but like we didn't really think of it as a big deal uh most of the time we knew that we couldn't go so when she said that we were going to bump up to a different completely different team and this completely different routine and we were getting new people um we were all just kind of we like all started screaming and jumping around and then she was like okay okay settle down go into your routine <laughs> <laughs> she was kind of like okay okay it, yeah it's a big deal but okay so we still have to practice right so we all went into our routine and that practice wasn't really it wasn't a good practice cuz we were all like so excited sure we didn't really hit we didn't really we weren't focused we were all just so excited sure and it, it, that's that's true i mean it, it you guys kind of got blindsided. I mean, nobody knew that this was coming. Not even the parents. Nobody did. And, you know, the number one question I get asked all the time is, was that a real mini team? What Was, was it mostly mini kids or did they pull down a ton of youth kids? And it really was a mini team, right? Yeah. Um, we had probably five other bigger kids from other teams. We brought in a new stunt group, right? Yeah, just one and, new stunt group. Yeah, and yep. that was just so we could go as large. But we all, like, we embraced them. We made friends. Now my those friends are still my friends today. Um, and, yeah, it was only, like, five people. It was not a whole different team. So tell me how it made you feel that the coaches had that much faith in you guys. That, that she thought you could do that. Well, I mean, it was kind of weird because I was like, well, I've never had this much, like, belief in this team. I mean, this is my second year, and I was just kind of in awe, starstruck. I yeah, was like, it's pretty oh. cool opportunity. But y you guys had a big risk, right? You you could have won the Triple Crown on points at that pay. Did you guys ever think about that, or were you could just kind of focused on Summit? Um, we were, well, we were kind of disappointed that we couldn't win the Triple Crown, um, but we also knew that, well, if we win Summit, winning the Triple Crown, we get a lot of cool stuff, but Summit, you, a lot of people can't say that they've won Summit, mm -hmm. um, and plus we get the ring, so we were all kind of excited about getting the chance to win the Summit ring, which is a really big deal. Very cool. So that concludes my interview with Caitlin. Next, we're going to hear part two from Blair Green. And this is a, a, a good perspective f from a parent's perspective um, on literally walking into the gym one day, um, thinking you were prep, uh, preparing for one competition and then completely being blindsided on an, an incredible vision um, that a coach has for your six-year-old kid. So... Take a listen to Blair, uh, me and Blair, on this conversation uh, as she describes her feeling as a parent um, going into the next competition. Okay, so I'm back with Blair Green, and I just finished reading The Peppermint Plot Twist. And 
I, Blair, I want to get your perspective on, well, first of all, when you heard there was going to be a mandatory meeting and, and, and a parent needed to be present for each kid, what was your initial thought? I know what mine was, but what was your initial thought when you heard about this meeting? Um, I honestly don't know what I, I, I know I wasn't thinking that what was coming was what was coming. <laughs> I know yeah. that for a fact. Um, I don't know if she just kind of wanted to refocus us. Um, I don't know if she was just, just like, a, you know, like we had talked about a lot of people at the gym were pretty down and upset about what had happened at NCA, if this was just a matter of refocusing parents and trying to keep things positive and keep things positive for our kids, if she was going to put them in another competition as a mini team. Like, we, I, honestly, I was not expecting the news that was coming out of her mouth. <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty crazy. I, I remember yeah. a lot of the parents uh, had mentioned, well, maybe there was a technicality or a scoring fault at NCA, and we actually, you know, there was a lot. I, I don't get into detail in the book for obvious reasons, but there was wide speculation on what this meeting could be about. It was it was, it was interesting. And, of course, as you know, the whole time I knew what, what the meeting was about, but unfortunately I couldn't say anything. <laughs> it was really, you knowing me, uh, I, you knew I was busting at the seams wanting to tell everybody, but unfortunately yeah, and, I did. <laughs> and now that I'm remembering, I think you were sending out cryptic tweets for about three days uh, before this had all gone down, too. <laughs> Yes, yes, I, w I wouldn't let everybody <laughs> off that easily. <laughs> so, yeah, so so let, let's fast forward um, in, into the meeting itself. So, yeah. you know, we had a room full of parents there. What was your initial reaction when Ashley let the cat out of the bag? Um, shocked. Um, yeah. Completely surprised and floored. I mean, this had never been done at Stingrays before, and there had been quite a few mini teams that probably could have gone on to Summit for a couple of years. At, at, at that point, it was pretty much the beginning of Summit. But just thinking of the right. previous teams that came before us just the past couple of years, yeah, I, I was completely shocked in Florida and was was not prepared for that at all. Right. Yeah, it was a pretty incredible moment. I remember looking around, and some some of the parents knew what that meant. Um, most didn't. Uh, summit, right. summit was summit was not on our radar. Um, I, I know this wasn't your first year as a cheer parent, nor was it mine. We knew the significance of Summit, but this was a lot of kids' first year and, and, and a lot of parents' first year, and Summit just wasn't on their radar. So right. I think it took a little while for everything to settle mm -hmm. in for everybody. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was pretty pretty surprising and pretty yeah this disbelief might be a good word um for yeah, real, sure i think yeah yeah absolutely and i guess the final question i have for you blair was yeah so you've been to summit since since peppermint went a few years ago correct yes and seeing seeing the just the level of intensity and um, the level of competition there. Do you ever think a team will be able to do this again? Wow, put me on the spot, Eric. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there was some. There was something about that team. Um, you know, talent. Talent speaks for itself, and, and certainly there are a lot of talented teams. I think. I think what works for, for them. I think their innocence worked in their favor. Um, yeah. I don't think they knew how good they were, and I don't think they knew how much they were capable of. And I think with them, you know, they didn't they didn't have the pressure because that had never been done before, at least not at Stingrays. And so yeah. it was sort of like going for broke. It was like let's just go for it because this hasn't been done, and let's see what happens. Um, I think now that it's been done, when it gets talked about, there there's just a, a level of, of tension that comes up. I mean I'd like I'd like to say it can happen again, but I've I've even still years later and, and my daughter's been on a couple of really great teams since then. Great kids, great families, great coaches, great skills. It was it was just different. 
Uh, yeah. It was it was just different, and that's you know in in a really good way. And and honestly, I don't I don't know. You know, I think teams like that come along, you know, once in a lifetime if you're lucky. Right. I, I still to this day don't think the kids completely understand what they did. Um, in in going to summit the last three years myself, it, it just seems like the the talent, the intensity level, the skill level of all the kids multiplies every year. So I, I would never say never. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a team that comes down the line um, and, and, and tries to go for it again. And, and I will certainly, whether it's with Stingrays or any other gym, <laughs> will certainly be rooting them on. So, Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, boy, I appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us on the podcast, and, uh, you know, good luck to your team and your daughter in the future. All right. Well, thanks, Eric. It was great to be here, and uh, good luck to everyone who's listening as well. If you're a cheerleader or a cheer parent, uh, it was good to talk to you. Absolutely. Thanks. That concludes my interview with Blair. The next interview we're going to have is uh, – Caitlin's younger sister, Kelsey, who is my spirit animal. She uh, was f- five years old at the time uh, of, of this experience, and she had been uh, on Stingrays for – this would be her second year. She was on the Grape Rays um, both uh, the year prior to and again this year, and she was also coached by Coach Ashley. And I love her feedback because it, it's honest and it's candid. And if anybody knows Kelsey, she is uh, all of that in a bag of chips. So without further ado, um, we're going to get a little perspective from a younger sister who went through this entire experience. Hope you enjoy. And uh, Kelsey, how are you? Good. Good. This is Kelsey, uh, Caitlin's younger sister. She was on the Grape Rays. Uh, during that NCA competition, and um, you know, coming back from NCA, you guys hit on both days too, right? But yes. I think you ended up finishing fourth. fourth place. You remember, huh? Yep. So, talk to me a little bit about that. Is it, that's not a fun feeling, is it? No, it's kind of like when you're on stage in the awards, you're um, you're really excited, and you're scared, and your adrenaline goes up um, and stuff. But I remember, like, because when they announced um, the first place, I couldn't really hear, but I knew it wasn't us. Um, So I went back after awards, and I asked Coach Jackson what place we got in. I still remember it. He said fourth, and I was, he kind of looked, like, upset and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, and I just walked away. Yeah, that's a tough feeling, huh? So let's be honest. When you found out that Peppermint was going to go for a summit bid at the next competition, UCA, did you think they had a good shot at doing it? Uh, not really. <laughs> that was kind of the common theme, right? It was kind of a long shot? Yeah. Yeah. I also felt a bit jealous. Sure, sure, I bet, because that, that was a pretty cool opportunity, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That concludes my interview with Kelsey. Thanks for hanging in, everybody. I know it was a longer podcast. Um, I I think this is kind of a unique podcast to get some perspectives from parents, from uh, athletes on the team, and and even siblings. So thanks for hanging in. The next chapter is UCA. So here we are. The stage has been set. The plan has been outlined. Um, The next step is execution. Uh, The team's all together now. It's a new team, some new faces. We got three practices to get ready for UCA. So I think the general vibe around the gym uh, at this stage was, oh, oh, that's cute. There's a mini team that's going to try for a summit bid, hopefully getting that large bid. It'll be kind of fun to watch. It's a fun story. Um, You know, do we, does everybody think it's going to happen? Probably not, but it's kind of the thought that counts, and it, it, it's kind of a cool story. So, But this is not a normal team, and what happens next uh, may take your breath away. So hang out for the next chapter as we find out what happens at UCA. See you next time, everybody. Welcome to Midland. The greatest place on earth has bleeding green turf. It's always
is a magical day when you're ready.